G'day guys and gal, death sucks. I mean, I can't personally attest to that, but it's currently something that I and many others are trying to avoid at all costs. However, for some, death is the sweetest gift they could ever receive. Nobody, and I mean nobody, craved death more than Vulcan while he was getting horrifically tortured by Conrad Curse. See, Vulcan was a perpetual. He literally could not die, which sounds good until you are Conrad Curse's bitch, and he can literally do whatever he wants to you torturing you to death time and time again, in the most vicious creative ways possible. Then when he realizes he can't physically kill you, he will kill your spirit and break your mind. The torturing of Vulcan remains the most horrific, heinous act of suffering a character has ever endured in Warhammer 40k. A testament to how fucked up Conrad is, as well as how strong Vulcan's character is, that he still likes giving hugs. Before we get started, sure, the genetics you have, the cards you are dealt in life, plays a big role in how you look. But even the worst hand can win if you play it right. That's why I'm a huge advocate for skincare and have once again partnered up with Geology for this video. Your pimply, oily, blotchy, discolored, or dry skin is partly genetics, but it is mostly from a lack of care. Pretty much all of these issues can be reduced if not completely cured by a skincare routine. The issue for us blokes is that we don't know what to use or when to use it. That's where Geology comes in, by getting you to fill out a quick online survey to determine a custom skincare regime for you. Then it's delivered to your door with easy to follow instructions. I never get blackheads, very rarely get any pimples on my face, and I no longer have oily skin. All because I've been using Geology for the past few years. You want to know why some people turn 30 or 40 and stay golden while others go down the trash chute and end up looking terrible? A big factor is if they are using skincare. The best news is they are offering a massive 70% off your first skincare package as well as 30% off any other product of your choice. That could be a body wash, deodorant or shampoo when you use my link and code MAGICAL70 below. Cheers to Geology for sponsoring this video. Today we will go over all the messed up shit Conrad did to Vulcan as well as how Vulcan was eventually able to escape. Uh, let's get into it. The capturing of Vulcan wasn't a deliberate thing. As the Lulists on Isvan were being massacred, Ferris got decapitated and Corvus led a breakout with a few thousand Raven Guard, Vulcan was getting surrounded. He was a juggernaut, smashing traitor forces into pulp left, right and center. The traitors genuinely couldn't take him down until they literally dropped a mini nuke on him and then piled on top of him, stabbing him to death. Vulcan did die that day, but due to his previously unknown status as a perpetual, he survived. This was unexpected, with Horus most likely thinking Vulcan was just extra resilient, so he gave Vulcan to Conrad and told the Night Haunted to kill Vulcan by any means necessary. Conrad relished this command. He believed that all Primarchs were as ruthless and evil as he was. They just hid it beneath facades of honor and duty. For Conrad to get rid of Vulcan, the kind Primarch, it would bring them all down and make it much easier to prove his point. After after all, Conrad literally couldn't make his point while the cuddly Primarch existed. However, after burning Vulcan, freezing him, ejecting him into the void, decapitating him, shooting him, stabbing him, drowning him and more, Vulcan was the same. He had fully regenerated each and every time. The kicker is that the majority of the time Vulcan had zero memory of him dying, so whilst he was pretty miserable, he wasn't actually being mentally affected that much to begin with. He even almost escaped at the start, killing a bunch of Night Lords, however when he reached the exit, it turns out he was on board Conrad's flagship, so he got ejected into space freezing to death before then being recovered and reviving. Conrad got extremely frustrated. He couldn't kill the one Primarch he needed to kill, despite how hard he tried. What's even worse is that Vulcan's regeneration was actually speeding up, and his will remained strong. It wasn't all sunshine and rainbows for Vulcan though. He had begun hallucinating a piece of shit version of Ferris in his cell. Over time, the hallucination decayed more and more, as it constantly mocked him, calling him weak, a failure, and a coward. This was the manifestation of Vulcan's guilt. He blamed himself in part for Ferris's death. Vulcan also had an abyss of insanity brewing within him. This was caused by the Isfan drop site massacre and the loss of so many of his sons. Also, Conrad's constant murdering of him didn't really help. Unable to physically kill Vulcan, Conrad decided it was time to change tactics. He would break Vulcan's mind and spirit, turning him into a degenerate and then proving Conrad right, that all Primarchs were as big as assholes as he was. He began putting Vulcan through impossible yet extra brutal challenges. 
One of them included having Vulcan's arms chained to a counterweight. In the room next to him that Vulcan could see into was a group of people, men, women, innocents. The counterweight Vulcan was holding was preventing a slab of rock from crushing everyone in the opposite room. Hence Vulcan held with all his might, tons and tons of force exerted in the most awkward position possible. He was in absolute agony for hours, days, as he fought to save these people. He knew it was hopeless and that he should just drop it and give the people a quick death, but that was against Vulcan's nature. Conrad kept putting more and more weight on the slab, making Vulcan's job harder and harder as his muscles tore, bones cracked and sinew split. During this impossible trial, Vulcan saw that one of the prisoners appeared to be an old remembrancer that he knew in the past. That remembrancer was the only person who was totally calm throughout the trial, seemingly content to accept his fate. Eventually, although Vulcan does not know when, the people were crushed. Not from Vulcan failing per se, but more so from Conrad getting bored and lowering the slab onto them. Vulcan was shattered. He had bent his mind, body and will for nothing. The gore of the people was splashed everywhere. He didn't even notice that they had been crushed for ages since he was so in the zone. The worst part is that Vulcan holding the increasingly heavy weight would have meant that the slab would have crushed the people very very slowly and painfully, rather than if he had just let go and let them all die instantly. This was the first thing Conrad had done that had genuinely cracked Vulcan's will. Conrad resolved to keep going. Another fucked up challenge was when Vulcan was placed in a large robot mecha machine that chased captured guardsmen and loyalist Astartes, including his own captured salamanders around a maze, tearing them to shreds when it caught them. Vulcan desperately struggled against the machine, attempting to halt it or disable it, but he was just a prisoner of it. Conrad was basically trying to make Conrad feel like he was murdering people. Fortunately, one of Vulcan's favorite sons was able to devise a plan to ambush the machine in the maze, disabling it enough so that Vulcan was able to plunge its own chainsawed arm into the heart of the machine, killing himself as he did so. This trial wasn't so bad as not many people died. It was over pretty quickly and Vulcan was able to overcome it. However, the next one was not so much fun. Vulcan awoke at a banquet, a huge table of food and water. He was chained to his chair, but the table was also surrounded by other people, all innocent or captured loyalists. However, everyone was blinded and deafened, with their hands cut off and replaced with knives and forks. The issue was that due to how they were tied up, it was impossible to feed themselves. However, they could feed the person next to them. Vulcan shouted at them to feed each other, but it literally fell on deaf ears and one by one, the people starved to death or died of dehydration around him over the following days. He once again saw what he thought was the old remembrancer, looking calm and content. When everyone was dead, Conrad popped up and in a fit of mad and rage, killed Vulcan with cutlery. Conrad was extremely pissed off. Vulcan was yet to break, which made Conrad feel like he was wrong, that he was the only piece of shit. Instead of reflecting on this, Conrad decided that he would try harder. But before Conrad's next trial could begin, Corvus Korax broke into Conrad's ship with an elite strike force and initiated a rescue of Vulcan. Vulcan was overjoyed to see his brother and the two fought their way through the Night Lord Jailers. However, just as they thought they would escape, they were led into a trap an arena. They were told that whoever killed the other would be allowed to leave along with their captured sons. Vulcan's sons from the maze were in a cage with Corvus's sons who had been captured during the escape attempt were also there. The two loyalist Primarchs did not want to fight, but seeing no other option, they did. Vulcan gets the upper hand, but he refuses to kill Corvus, further enraging Conrad. The catch was that none of this was actually real. Conrad had a group of sorcerers perform a spell to imprint a vivid dream in Vulcan's head, the dream of his escape. If he had killed Corvus, it would prove Conrad right. However, Conrad once again failed. Vulcan, for his part, was very, very close to insanity by this point, but he managed to hide that from Curse. The corpse hallucination of Ferris was still present, but as it had decayed so much, it couldn't actually speak anymore. It just kind of stood there, a permanent rictus grin on its face. In his desperation, Curse devised the final trial. In the bowels of his ship, he had Perturabo create an impossible maze. The amount of calculations and algorithms you would have to process simultaneously in order to correct navigate it was obscene. It was ever shifting, ever changing. At the heart of the maze was Vulcan's hammer, Dawnbringer, a special weapon that had a teleporter inbuilt into it so that Vulcan could get off the ship if he reached it. However, Vulcan's captured sons were also in the heart of the maze, bleeding out. So Vulcan only had a limited time to reach the middle if he wanted to try save them. Vulcan enters the maze, not knowing how to solve it as the hours fly by. Conrad occasionally leaps out of the shadows to stab Vulcan or try scare him, reveling in the pain he is able to inflict. Days pass and Vulcan's resolve begins to fail. He knows that his sons have bled out by now 
or are about to. He also knows that he will never solve this maze, thus will never be free. The insanity in his mind begins to break through, but before it does, a warm golden light fills Vulcan and the Emperor appears to him. It turns out that the old Remembrancer who Vulcan kept seeing was actually the Emperor watching over Vulcan. The Emperor loves Vulcan more than many of his other sons, hence the Emperor expended an insane amount of energy to project halfway across the galaxy to keep an eye on him. At Vulcan's darkest hour, the Emperor spoke to him and filled him with strength and resolve, beating back the darkness of his insanity. Vulcan had enough. He had endured the worst the galaxy had to offer and he endured it mostly in silence. He had always tried to empathize with Conrad, even as Conrad tore him limb from limb on the daily. But no more Mr. Nice Guy! Vulcan shouts, Come on Conrad you fucking pussy! I always knew you were the weakest of us! I always took it easy on you in the practice cages, as did we all. You are so fucking pathetic, I am embarrassed to call you brother. Not exactly a one-to-one -one transcript, but close enough. It works. Conrad is goaded and triggered so much that he opens up a direct pathway to the heart of the maze. They would fight it out like men. As a bit of a tragic twist, Vulcan's sons had been dead even before Vulcan set foot in the maze. Just another vicious trick from Conrad. Vulcan's hammer was protected by a force field with Conrad being armed and armored. However, he was so triggered by Vulcan calling him a weak little pussy that he tried to throw hands with Vulcan. This is a bad idea. Vulcan is one of the largest and strongest Primarchs. Conrad is fast and a wicked fighter, but he is not particularly strong. Vulcan slams Conrad so hard against the force field that it overloads. He takes his hammer as Conrad says, You can't use it to escape. This room is teleport shielded. You are stuck here forever. Giving us one of the best lines in all of 40k from Vulcan as he says, you are forgetting one thing, Conrad. Conrad replies, What's that, brother? It's also a hammer. SMASH! Vulcan absolutely sends Conrad with a vicious smash with the hammer, as he beats him time and time again. Conrad is smashed down and at Vulcan's mercy. Conrad is delighted though, he can finally receive the sweet kiss of death whilst proving Vulcan is as bad as he. But no, enragingly, Vulcan spares Conrad, truly proving that Conrad is wrong. Not everyone is as bad as he. Even when stripped to the bone, Vulcan still had compassion and mercy. Conrad is just a huge fucking piece of shit. Vulcan then uses the teleporter in his hammer anyway, as the technology behind it is significantly more advanced than any teleportation blocker. Unfortunately, the teleportation puts Vulcan in McCrag's upper atmosphere. The agony of the re-entry finally breaks his will, and the insanity finally claims him. He doesn't just become this berserk monster, like he doesn't just start killing ultramarines, but he isn't doing so well and he can't speak. He would eventually get cured of his insanity, but that is a story for another time. Many people say that Vulcan Lives was the most boring book of the Horus Heresy, so if you wanted to skip it, this gives you the basic rundown. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be, where well, there's not only a boatload of Battle Mace 40 million hentai, but also a bunch of live action nude cosplay photos. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more horrific content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.